He called out with his radio. A woman replied, instructing us to come to the ranger station. But here is where the plot thickens. Wicked things are about to be revealed. My girlfriend and I decided to take a remote wilderness camping trip into unknown parts of the West Virginia mountains. There were no directions or maps, only a dirt road, but I thought it might have been used back in the 1800s for wagon trains. It certainly was not designed for a vehicle. On the left side was a steep rocky ledge that must have risen straight up for more than a hundred feet. On the right was a sheer drop-off that went straight down to a fast set of roaring rapids. The path was cut out of the mountainside. It twisted and turned through an old-growth virgin pine forest. We continued on in fear. My girlfriend couldn't contain her emotions. We argued with each other, but what good was that going to do? We just had to keep moving forward, but the mood was very, very tense, for lack of a better word. We were hoping to find a place to turn around, but we were committed now. There was no way for us to turn around. We had only about four hours of daylight left. We needed to find somewhere quickly to spend the night. We had to navigate very carefully to avoid sliding off one of those slippery rocks down into the river below. I was driving a four-wheeler dually. There were a few times that one of the back tires wasn't even touching the ground. Then suddenly, the path opened up at a fork. There was an old sign pointing to the right. It said, Provisions Ahead. It was written on an old, dilapidated piece of wood, the kind you'd expect to have seen in the days of the frontier. Daylight was fading fast, so we drove to the right. After another hour of switchbacks, we kept twisting as we were still climbing. At last, with just a couple hours before nightfall, we came upon what looked like an old abandoned place that reminded me of that old movie with Burt Reynolds, Nett Beatty, and John Voight, straight out of the movie Deliverance. There was an old general store with very old, antiquated gas pumps. A candle was the only light source. There was a junkyard surrounding the property, full of broken down pickup trucks, tractors, even some later model cars. They couldn't have been more than a few years old. This seemed very odd to us, so we went about our own business very cautiously. The place had a front porch with some old kin folks sitting around, laughing at us as if they never saw another person before. They didn't say a word whenever one of us tried to talk with them. They just stared blankly at us and said nothing. It was clear these were a mutant family of inbreds. Their bodies looked deformed, and two of the ugliest, dirtiest, toothless, bearded men walked toward us, spitting tobacco juice that ran down the front of their beat-up, hand-me-down farmer jumpsuits. As they came closer to us, they spoke with an accent that sounded like some kind of speech disorder. I asked them about all those broken down trucks and those later model cars. They just pointed to their old junker of a tow truck and tried to explain that these cars were left abandoned. I guess from people like us who were too afraid of driving any further and left them blocking the road. So they simply told us that they were keeping them here in case the owners came back to recover them. As strange as the story was, it made sense to us. So we continued to ask them if they knew of a place on the mountain where we could find a remote camping place. They hopped into their old tow truck and told us to follow them, which we did for about 30 minutes. Then the road came to an end. They pointed to a trail, saying, Follow that path and you'll find a secluded clearing at the top of the mountain with a lake where you can set up your camp. It's only a 30-minute walk. 
We still had about an hour of daylight left. We gathered some firewood and quickly assembled the tent. Then we walked down a short path where we discovered the most beautiful, clear, pristine mountain lake we could see for miles in every direction. This was truly nirvana. After we finished setting up the tent, we brought out the camping gear and sat next to the fire. There was this warm, gentle summer breeze full of the pine forest scent surrounding us. I never saw so many lights in the sky. The stars were dancing in the heavens as they seemed to be winking at us. There was a full moon. You could hear the sounds of howling creatures in the distance. We could hear the cicadas singing their love calls. The birds were flying by to roost in the trees. We sat around the campfire and told scary stories like the boogeyman, Bigfoot, shapeshifters, you know, the kinds of things we all talk about on camping trips. Soon after, the birds were settled down and the warm summer breeze began to take on a bit of a chill as the wind began to blow stronger. So we decided it was time to put the fire out and do our usual nighttime rituals. And then we retired to the tent and snuggled up to each other in our one two-person cocoon sleeping bag for a bit of romance. The night passed without incident. When I woke up, my girlfriend was gone. She took off all her jewelry and I noticed that she must have put her bikini on. The towel was gone, so I assumed that she woke up before me and went down to the lake for an early swim. I called out to her, but there was no reply. So I unassumingly walked down the path leading to the lake when suddenly I froze in disbelief. What I witnessed next is something straight out of a horror story. Her lifeless, dead, mutilated body was slumped over the pine branches. Her entrails were removed. I panicked and ran as fast as I could down the other side of the mountain on a trail that pointed to the ranger station. I came upon an official looking man whose shirt badges read Park Ranger. As we hurried back to the place where I last saw her body, he listened intently to my panicked voice as we ran as fast as we could to the campsite path that led down the trail to the lake where my girlfriend's dead body was. (laughs) But it was gone. He called out with his radio. A woman replied, instructing us to come to the ranger station. But here is where the plot thickens. Wicked things are about to be revealed. Stay tuned for the next part of this series and send your comments. Until next time, stay safe.